welcome dear students in this video i'll be going to discuss about previous year's questions of csr ugc net life science and the topic is plasma membrane so let's start okay now let's talk about the another questions on the plasma membrane topic that comes in csr ugc net life science that is from the question 2017 december in my previous uh, questions i have discussed about 2018 june now this is from 2017 december the question is sphingolipids and cholesterol of the lipid bilayer aggregate into multiple tiny wraps wraps means lipid wraps instead of a single large one they they aggregate okay considering that size of the lipid wraps depends on the affinity of the sphingomyelin and cholesterol for one another and other lipids in the membrane that means the size they actually trying uh, actually mentioning the size of the lipid wraps choose the option that best describes this property how how will you know the size of this uh, lipid wraps the fact is one option one is sphingom lipids and cholesterol bind to one another tightly and independent of any other lipid molecules the second option is s and c means sphingom lipid and cholesterol bind to one another with same affinity with same affinity as they bind to other lipid species this is a totally wrong uh, uh, actually option wrong options they bind actually with high affinity okay so this is true but independent of any other lipid molecules that is not true so one option is wrong second option is wrong the third option is s and c binds to one another with high affinity under the influence of some cytoskeletal elements that is not also true because there is no need of cytoskeletal element in case of phospholipids so the fourth option remains that is s and c have slightly higher affinity okay than other lipid molecules this is that fact sphingolipids and cholesterol has a higher affinity than other molecules of the membrane and are in a dynamic equilibrium with their free form and there are questions from plasma membrane 2017 june the question is a membrane associated protein is composed of seven alpha helices with each helix containing 19 hydrophobic residues while treating the membrane with all kinds of proteases a major portion of this protein remains intact so this is first treatment first experiment they treated this protein that has seven alpha helix and they treated with protease they found that major portion of this protein remains intact another experiment is the treated treatment with high salt till 1.5 molar nacl and buffered with ph5 failed to dissociate this protein from the plasma membrane now predict the most appropriate nature and orientation of this protein in the membrane so to answer these questions you have to know the fact about uh, membrane protein i have made a video on membrane protein you can see and the membrane protein is actually three type one is called integral membrane protein and there is called peripheral membrane protein and another is lipid anchored protein peripheral glycoprotein or peripheral protein can be actually isolated by this way by this treatment so this is the option one is not right integral protein with seven membrane spanning regions is the correct answer because integral membrane protein cannot be isolated or dissociated by this way they have if you want to isolate this integral membrane protein you have to use detergent another option is peripheral protein with both n and c terminals remains exposed to outer surface so this is actually uh, uh, logic less because there is no logic behind the peripheral protein because peripheral protein can be extracted by this way whether the n or c terminals remain exposed outside of the cell or not okay so this is actually a very uh, uh, silly uh, options you have to understand another option is this is also very silly because if you know that peripheral proteins can be dissociated by this way the three options actually false and then the two option is only correct the like peripheral proteins with both n and c terminals remains exposed to the cytosolic surface of the cell membrane okay so this is uh, plasma membrane questions in 2017 part c questions this is another question of plasma membrane that comes in 2017 june in my previous questions i have discussed about another question that is 2017 june so in 2017 june there is two questions come from plasma membrane the question here is when the cholera toxin gains access gains access to the human intestinal tract 
It binds tightly to specific receptors in the plasma membrane of the epithelial cells lining the small intestine, causing membrane-bound adrenal cyclage to undergo prolonged activations re resulting in extensive loss of H2O and sodium. Pretreatment of epithelial cells with various phospholipases and proteases fail to inhibit the binding of cholera toxin to its receptor and the fluid loss but treatment with exoglycosidase you can see exoglycosidase this uh, information has come in 2000 I will, I will show you 2018 June you can see here in the 2018 June I have already discussed about these questions here is exoglycosidase you can see here acylo GM1 or glycosides okay so this exoglycosidase prior to binding significantly reduce these effects so this exoglycosidase has effect and now they are asking which of the following molecule could be receptor for this toxin you have to understand this uh, questions another time cholera toxin enter into the cells they treated the cells with different lipases proteases but failed failed to failed to inhibit the binding of cholera toxin to its receptor so there is a receptor when they treated with phospholipase and protease they failed to inhibit the binding of collagen cholera toxin bind with the receptor and the fluid loss occur but treatment with exoglycosidase when they treated with this enzyme or molecules like exoglycosidase is an enzyme prior to the binding of signal reduce these effects and how it works then they are asking what is the receptor what could be the receptor is it phosphoryl sodium potassium antipage ganglioside or chlorine HCO3 exchanger what could be the answer I have mentioned that exoglycosidase works on ganglioides and the answer is ganglioside ganglioides specifically I want to mention that GM1 is the receptor for cholera toxin in my biomembrane structure or plasma membrane nodes I have mentioned you can see here I have mentioned in red color cholera toxin binds to GM1 ganglioides and gain entry into the cells okay so this is one information that actually come in the uh, CSR questions if you know this single line then you can answer the questions another information I have also mentioned this is not the uh, information of these questions but I want to share it with you polyoma virus enter the cells after binding initially to ganglioside so this is another example of the receptor so ganglioside acts as a receptor for polyoma virus also for cholera toxins thank you for watching this video